गौरंगा Those of you that like to look up the verse that we're going to be discussing, the, this morning verse is Canto 10, Chapter 9, Text 19. 10, 9, 19. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Evam Sundarshita Yanga. Harina Vitya Vash Yata. Svavashena Pi Krishnena. Yas yedam sheshvaram vashe evam sandarshita yanga harina pritya vashyata savashena pi krishnena yas yedam sheshvaram vashe so the verse is from Mother Desoda binding Krishna because this is Damodar month. And the translation, oh Maharaj Pariksit, the entire this entire universe with its great exalted demigods like Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, Lord Indra, is under the control of the Supreme Personality of God, and yet the Supreme Lord has one transcendental attribute. He has more than one. He comes under the control of his devotees. This was now exhibited by Krishna in this past time. Of course, the narrator is Shukadeva. Shukadeva is describing Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. And this most beloved pastime of Krishna is the subject of chapter 9. And we're going to take a peek at chapter 10 this morning because right away in the purport, here's the Bhaktivedanta purport. This is Srila Prabhupada and his disciples. This pastime of Krishna's is very difficult to understand, but the devotees can understand it. It is therefore said, Darshayam's tad vidam loka atmano bhakta vashyatam. 10, 11, 9, colon. The Lord displays the transcendental attribute of coming under the control of his devotees, as stated in the Brahma Samhita 535. Ekopyasorachayatam jagadanda kotim yaj chakti asti jagadanda chayaya dantaha andanta rasta paramanu chayanta rastam govindamadi pudusham tamaham bajamin. By his one plenary portion as Paramatma, the Lord controls innumerable universes with all their demigods, semicolon, yet. He agrees to be controlled by a devotee. In the Upanishads, it is said that the Supreme Personality of Godhead can run with more speed than the mind. But here we can see that although Krishna wanted to avoid being arrested by his mother, he was finally defeated. And Mother Jasoda captured him. Lakshmi Sahasra Shatasambrahma Sevyamanam. Colon. Krishna is served by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune. Nonetheless, he steals butter. Like one who is poverty stricken, Yamaraj, the controller of all living entities, fears the order of Krishna, yet Krishna is afraid of his mother's stick. These contradictions cannot be understood by one who is not a devotee. 
But a devotee can understand how powerful is unalloyed devotional service to Krishna, semicolon. It is so powerful that Krishna can be controlled by an unalloyed devotee. This Vritya Vashyata, which is mentioned in this verse, the morning verse, does not mean that he is under the control of the servant. Hmm. Rather, he is under the control of the servant's pure love. In Bhagavad Gita 1.21, it is said that Krishna became the chariot driver of Arjuna. Arjuna or ordered him, Senior Ubayor Madhye Ratham Stapaya Me Chuta. Quote, my dear Krishna, you have agreed to be my charioteer and to execute my orders. Please place my chariot between the two armies of soldiers. Krishna immediately executed this order, and therefore one may argue that Krishna also is not independent, but this is one's ajnana, or ignorance. Krishna is always fully independent, semicolon. When he becomes subordinate to his devotees, this is a display of ananda chinmaya rasa, the humor of transcendental qualities that increases his transcendental pleasure. Everyone worships Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and therefore, sometimes he desires to be controlled by someone else. Such a controller can be no one else but a pure devotee. Very nice purport. And one can, can say, I picked this because this is like the essence of the whole Leela, or one of the important essences of the whole Leela. He's not controlled by the devotee, he's controlled by the love of the devotee. So if you want to control Krishna, you have to become a lover of Krishna. And then it's not controlling Krishna, it's the love controls Krishna. It's similar to, of course different from, but similar to the statement that Lord Vishnu makes to Dravasa Muni. Dravasa, I'm not independent from my devotee. You've offended my devotee. You're asking me to take away Sudarshan Chakra. Dravasa, go to my devotee. And if he says, it's done. If he gives his forgiveness, if he gives his forgiveness, then Sudarshan Chakra will stop. Because Sudarshan Chakra is after you because you offended my devotee. So yesterday we spoke about offense. The offense of the Vidvida to Lakshmana. And it was several kind of sequential spiraling offenses. But that brought about his fall down or his susceptibility to bad association. Through bad association, he became bad. But Bhakti can protect you. Bhakti will protect you. Provided no offense, small thing, right? No offense, but it's it's important. Bhakti is important and offenseless. Bhakti is especially important. Now, Mother Dasoda didn't make an offense, although one could argue. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't she make an offense? She wants to bind Krishna. She's chasing Krishna with a stick in her hand. Is that not an offense? Lord Brahma, he, Lord Brahma, wanted Krishna to display the limit of his powers, and so he stole the calves and the cowherd boys and put them in a cave. And the offense was in two things. He stole and he interrupted Krishna's pastimes. His pleasure pastimes were interrupted by the Lord of the universe, Lord Brahma. 
that, that was that was the offense. It was an offense. And the kampam susamikshamano. We I was asked to speak on this verse from a while in Dallas. You know the verse? Tate nukampam susamikshamano. This verse is spoken by Lord Brahma. It's a very important verse. Often recited. Where he, Brahma, is acknowledging, I made a big boo boo. Krishna, I offended you. And I acknowledge my offense to you. So I'm not coming to you and asking you, please take away the reaction to the offense. Rather, I await whatever it is that's coming to me for that offense. Stane statakshutikatam tanavan manobir. One should stay in one position, whatever that your, your psychophysical nature is, stay in your position. But with body, mind, and words, dedicate yourself to Krishna's service. And something happens. That something that happens is you become eligible for returning to the spiritual world. He says that in a nice way. You, you inherit the property of your father because it's law. The son, eldest son, inherits the property as well as the debts of his father. Just jiveta. Jiveta means you just survive. Just carry on your life in that with that faith body, mind, and words dedicated to Krishna's service, and you become the inheritor of Krishna's property. sa daya bhak sa daya bhak you go, you, you go back to Godhead, like, you know, put Goloka Vrindavan in your pocket and now it's yours. You go and register in the, the property trust, property deeds and say, now Goloka is mine. Not like that but you're eligible to inherit a position in the spiritual world. Because everything is Krishna's, you can't own anything. Certainly not Goloka. So there's a power thematically throughout the Bhagavatam. There's a power of remaining fixed in devotion to the personality of God through thick and thin. And sometimes it's difficult and sometimes it's joyful and sometimes it's in between and sometimes and sometimes because there's diversity in the spiritual and the material world so the orientation the heart's orientation towards service that's this phrase that's in the verse that's repeated vritya vashyata vritya vashyata Vritya indicates Krishna's position of being the servant, the servitor. Vritya. Ekala Ishwara Krishna Arasaba Vritya. You know that phrase? There's one Ishwara, and then all others are Vrityas, servitors. Ekala. Ishwara Krishna. Sarva. Ritya, all their others are servants. Yet, Krishna becomes the Ritya of Vashita, his devotees, his pure devotees. And when, when Krishna serves his pure devotees, again, it's, it's, hap it's, it's all about love, <laughs> all about bhakti. It's, it's Krishna's happiness to do like that. It's Krishna's happiness to do it. It's not about our happiness. I mean, if one thinks it's about your happiness, sorry, you haven't entered into the realm of bhakti yet. I mean, you may be on the boundaries and the borders or something like that, but you haven't entered into the realm of bhakti yet. So what's that realm of bhakti? There's one, and all others are servitors. And when Krishna sees that that's the spirit 
of his servitor, he becomes the servitor of that servitor. It's love. It's love. It's like, you know, parents, loving parents, they love serving their children. They're loving children, they love serving their parents. You know, sometimes it's a little different. But a loving exchange between one and another is the mood of service. The subject is serving the object, and the object becomes the subject serving the other. And in, in Krishna conscious relationships or spiritual love, Krishna is at the center. You know, one is serving another for the satisfaction of Krishna. The other is serving the one for the satisfaction of Krishna. That Krishna is to be pleased is at the center. And then what does Krishna do? He becomes a servitor of such devotees. Now, it's not that we're interested in having Krishna become our servitor. That's silly. That's the idea of God is my order supplier. Then it's, then it's not service, it's business. I do this, and I have an expectation, and that's, here it is. God's my order supplier. And if he doesn't supply my order, he's out of order. And I start lodging complaints. I know a few people like that. You may also know some people like that. Just don't be like that yourself, whatever people may be. That, that tendency to do something to get something, that's material. That's fruitive work. I do something to get something. It's, it's standard. It's not like, it's just not what love is. It's not how to know Krishna. So back to, how can one know Krishna? Only through bhakti. No, Krishna, Krishna, that's a list in the purport. Krishna does seemingly contradictory things. And those that aren't devotees can't understand because there's a contradiction. And there's so many. The list that's here is similar to the list that Queen Kunti presents in Canto 1, Chapter 8, in her prayers. It's, there's a series of verses where she says, I don't understand you. And then she lists some contradictory things. And I don't understand. No, she's a pure devotee. So she's exhibiting her hum humility, or she's teaching us, but she's standing before Krishna in Hastinapur and appealing to Krishna to not leave. She didn't exactly say, please don't leave. But she's saying, please don't leave. <laughs> that's, what she, that's her heart. And Krishna knows, and Krishna leaves. He, he stays for a second. Mars Yudhisthira comes and appeals to Krishna, stay a while longer. So he stays, stays a while longer. And then he goes, because, because he has his leela. And there are loving associates of Krishna outside of Hastinapur, like in Dwarka. So he, you know, all of his queens and everything. So he goes back to Dwarka. The reference is made here I want to read a little bit. In the, the first sentence of the purport, second sentence of the purport, makes reference to Canto 10, Chapter 11. Canto 10, Chapter 11 is... Um, Krishna's childhood pastimes. So, you know, go back a little bit. So this is in between Krishna has pulled over the, the twin Arjuna trees. Nalakuvar and Mani Griva are liberated by Krishna because, well, he's tied by the grinding mortar by Mother Dasoda. He had another pastime. And then they offered their prayers. And then Nanda Maharaj had been pay, gone to Mathura to pay his tax as he came back, and he saw that the trees knocked over. And he saw Krishna tied to the grinding mortar, 
And he did real quick math. Two plus two is four. And so he untied Krishna. That's text six. So I'm, now I'm reading from 10, 11, seven. The gopis would say, quote, if you dance, my dear Krishna, then I shall give you half a sweetmeat. By saying these words, or by clapping their hands, all the gopis encouraged Krishna in different ways. At such times, although he was the supremely powerful personality of Godhead, he would smile and dance according to their desire, as if he were a wooden doll in their hands. Contradiction. Sometimes he would sing very loudly at their bidding. In this way, Krishna came completely under the control of the gopis. So Mother Tasoda and the elder Gop gopis. Text eight. Sometimes Mother Jashoda and her gopi friends would tell Krishna, bring this article or bring that article. Sometimes they would order him to bring a wooden plank, wooden shoes, or a wooden measuring pot. And Krishna, when thus ordered by the mothers, would try to bring them sometimes, however, as if unable to raise these things, he would touch them and stand there just to invite the pleasure of his relatives. He would strike his body with his arms to show that he had sufficient strength. And then comes the reference that was in chapter nine. To pure devotees throughout the world who could understand his activities, the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna exhibited how much he can be subdued by his devotees, his servants. In this way, he increased the pleasure of the Rajbasis by his childhood activities. That this is this is a theme of the section, and it's a theme of the the Damodar Lila, the love of Mother Jasoda bound Krishna, not the rope. Not Mother Jasoda, not the rope. The love of Mother Jasoda bound Krishna. Of course, one can say through the love of Mother Jasoda, Krishna was bound. But so she was the one doing, she, you know, what's the instrument, the causative instrument? There's an effect. What's the cause? It's, it's a philosophical point, but it's an important point. We don't do anything, even in devotional service. We do something, we do devotional service. <clears throat> but the effectiveness of that devotional service is not the effort. It's, it's another theme, and I'll just speak the, the theme and then see if there's some discussion. The theme is <clears throat> two inches too short. Two inches too short. Plenty of endeavor. Endeavor in love. Mother Jasoda had love. Plenty of endeavor. Lots of rope tied ropes together, more ropes, more ropes, more ropes. Jiva Goswami writes in his commentary, Mother Dasoda was perplexed, 150 feet of rope, and his waist is no bigger than a fist, and it's not going around his waist. I'm perplexed. Second perplexity, no matter how many different ropes I add, it's always two inches too short. Double perplexed. In the Bhagavatam, it says, there were ladies, her friends, who were watching the fun, and they were laughing. They weren't laughing at her. They were laughing at, you know, the, the mystery. How is, how, what's this? Two inches too short. So, our Acharya has described the significance, the other besides the prayasa or the endeavor of us in devotion, 
there's the reciprocation that comes from Krishna's side, Kripa. Both are needed. We'll say it again. Two things are needed, that's the two inches, effort and mercy. So we make some effort. But it's not the effort, it's the mercy. And the mercy is in reciprocation with the love, not exactly the effort, because how many of us have tried to do something and it just doesn't happen? You ever do that? You ever tried something and it's just somehow, like, what's going on? 150 feet of rope, small waist, little boy, then won't go around his waist. What's going on? The effort is there. So it's a lesson. It's, it's, it's an important principle of the lesson that along with effort comes mercy. So let's, let's do this one. Every one of us, you chant japa every day, you chant some japa beat. You chant japa every day? Very good. Me too. So when we chant japa, how, how able are you when chanting japa to keep your mind fixed on the sound? Distracted sometimes, right? Maybe sometimes attentive and mostly distracted. So the effort alone is not enough. That's an important lesson in bhakti life. Our effort is required. The, 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 your, your beads aren't going to chant themselves. You have to chant in the tongue and the lips and the vocal cords and, the, and everything and the ear. And... But there's mercy required also. That is to say, bhakti is a relationship. And without the mercy, we can't do anything. We can endeavor, that's okay, but the, the, the outcome is dependent upon mercy. Effort and mercy, two inches. And so in the Leela, Krishna seeing not only the effort that Mother Jasoda was making, but um, flowers were falling from her hair and her face was perspiring and she was motherly anxiety. So Krishna withdrew certain potencies and exhibited other potencies. One of those potencies was Kripa Shakti, so that she could bind him. This is from our acharyas. Now this is part of the beauty of this wonderful pastime, so, so special that for a whole month we immerse ourselves in remembering very sweet childhood pastime with many, many lessons embedded in the sweet pastime. So let's see if there's some discussion. I warned you, it wasn't just a completely abrupt ending. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So Maharaj, you talked about chanting and how we need mercy of Krishna in, in, in chanting also. To get the real fruit of chanting. We can chant without, but to get the fruit, yes. And Maharaj, they say that we have to chant with faith and we have to chant with a lot of feelings. So a couple of questions which I have in mind. When we chant, do we close our eyes and chant? I mean, we have to hear what we are uh, chanting, but does it make a difference if we are keeping our eyes closed or open? My answer to that question is whatever works. That may work. Eyes open may also work. And then, then you can you start making you know, little brainstorm a list of things that you could be doing while chanting. Visualize a particular painting. This is something that was a practice in one of the Japa retreats. And one devotee found it very empowering. Some of us have favorite 
paintings of Krishna or Radha Krishna or something, something. I have a few. That's something. And then whether your eyes are open or closed, it's something that's going on with the mind. Or without making a longer list, there's different things. <laughs> Coming before your deities and chanting for the pleasure of your deities with feeling. And that's with your eyes open or with your eyes closed. I mean, whatever works. Bhakti Mano Thakur, in one of his writings, says the main thing is don't be distracted, stay focused. So he goes so far in, in writing, says if you have difficulty, then go to a quiet room and put a blindfold over your eyes, not just close them. But you know, that's whatever works, whatever works. And the, the, the goal is attentiveness. So as far as I'm concerned, it, the, the intention is more important than the act. The intention, sankalpa, is where your attention will go. And where your attention goes, <clears throat> Then you're, then you're in the right position. So make sure, rather than the procedure or technique or tool, is the intention behind it. Hare yeah. Krishna. Hare yeah. Krishna. Um, so expanding on this, since we look up to you and try to follow your teachings, what has worked for you to be attentive and chanting? What has worked for me? Well, different things at different times, but I shared a little bit. The intention is most important, sankalpa. So what, you know, what, what's a, what your sankalpa is and what my sankalpa is might be worded differently, and that's, that's fine. It's natural, there's diversity, but something in the direction of the mood of service or being reestablished re in your relationship with Krishna. And, you know, different, at, at, from my experience is at different times, different things are effective. So I, that was my answer to her. At different times, I find this is really, a, it's a nice tool. It's very helpful. And then, Another time that it's very helpful, it's a nice tool, very helpful. It's the heart's orientation towards you're the subject, Krishna is the name of Krishna is the object. You know, remembering teachings of our acharyas or you know, and, and other things at different times, different things. But what's imperative is the intention behind those things. Because otherwise like the flickering mind that's in the mind and then it goes away and then something else comes and then something else comes to steady the mind so it stays in alignment with the heart then the intention is very important why am i doing this what is it about this that has inspired me to make to do this to make this a practice in my life. Yesterday, Satyasar introduced me to a teenage girl who has been chanting 16 rounds for some months. And my question to her was, it was a, you know, the Sankalpa question. What, what was the impetus to go from whatever your chanting was before to 16. She didn't have, it was difficult for her to give a clear answer. So I kind of helped her, but you know, in, in, th in, in terms of this particular conversation right now, it's important. Now intention may in course of time shift. 
quite okay. But let there be clarity with intention. Because if there isn't clarity with intention, then you're not likely to have attention. And if you have clarity of intention, then you'll find some means or another means or another means or combination or a series of things that help you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, sometimes, um, as, since you're talking about chanting and intention, but sometimes it becomes like when you have so many other things and you still have to do it, it just becomes of like... Of course. A, like, how do you, what do you tell yourself to keep motivated other than the fact that, yes, I have to do it because I've taken a vow? Well, duty is one thing and love is another thing. Duty may help one get to the place of love, but the place of love is not duty. It's this relationship. So that keeps me going. It's, you know, it's fundamental. The, each of us is going to be a little different. You're asking on a personal level. So, you know, back to being, you know, a, a kid. A young a youngster there's a higher reality three things this is me in college 50 something years ago three things and it, it's still with me it's just it's just it's become more matured but there's a high reality i don't know what it is honestly you know a college kid i don't know what it is and I want to know. So that's an inquisitive spirit. The I want to know is the inquisitive spirit, Brahma Jigyasa spirit. And then here in that spirit. So the, the hearing, and as it becomes matured, it's not just knowing, because knowing isn't, isn't sufficient without bhakti. Knowing through bhakti, it becomes realized. Knowledge becomes revealed. And realizing knowledge or realizing one's relations with Krishna is a gradual thing, like the rising of the sun in the morning is a gradual thing, but the sun will always rise. Even if we're, you know, goofy, the sun keeps rising. So wanting to connect with reality, with a capital R. The Supreme Person, wanting to be established in that relationship. And then it can mature and can mature and can mature. It's all about relationships. Be interpersonal and, you know, Supreme. It's all about relationships. Not about information, it's about relationships of loving service. So that's the inspiration that keeps me going. Thank you, Maharaj. Someone else behind you? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, we hear that Guru and Krishna's mercy is always there. We need to open our hearts to see that mercy. How do we see Krishna finally giving mercy to Mother Yashoda in this context? Oh, there's no finally. It, the whole thing was mercy and mercy and mercy. Even the obstruction was mercy. The removal of the obstruction was mercy. It's not that when she, then Krishna finally allowed Mother Dasoda to bind him, that was the penultimate of mercy. And before that, there wasn't mercy. It's the loving relation is the mercy. And, and just varieties, different flavors, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, it's all ice cream. Maybe not chocolate.
Maharaj, uh, uh, I have one question about, uh, we mentioned about, uh, you know, Krishna is not an order su supplier. And uh, so we are still allowed to do prayers. Right? So We're allowed to do what? Prayers. Prayas. Uh, prayer. Endeavor. Yeah, endeavor. No, prayer. Pray. Pray. Pray for, yeah. Prayers. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so what is allowed and what is not allowed? Everything's allowed. Relationship is the essence. I spent one of the one of the services that I did for some period of time was I taught at the Vrindavan Institute for Higher Education for a month. And I decided to pick as a topic prayers in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And I was overwhelmed because there's, a, you know, there's so many prayers. And then there's categories of prayers. And so one of the categories of prayers is a petition or a request. And it's okay. Then there's gradations. You know, then things on the material and things on the borderline and things on the spiritual. So it's, it, supposing it's on the material side, pray to Krishna for something, it's okay. It's not pure devotion, but it's okay. So, you know, your question was, where, where is it okay? It's anything is okay. Then, we, you know, to go closer and closer to pure devotion, you know, a, a nice example is Prahlad. Please don't make the request of me to ask something, make a prayer of request to you. Please don't do that. Because there, there isn't anything, be, there isn't a, a business arrangement between us. Now, supposing one has a business arrangement. He's, he's my order supplier, and he's got a big warehouse, and so yeah, I'm, I'm asking him for stuff. And for him, it's not a problem. And then it's not, it's not like just entirely a material, but it's a mix. But that's okay. If that's, then I may understand, let me, as my relationship with Krishna becomes more prominent as the sun rises more and more, then I don't need to ask Krishna for anything because he knows what my needs are. I don't have to ask him, like a child doesn't have to ask Starting to get cold, mommy. Can I have a, a jacket? Mommy's got six jackets waiting. <laughs> Which one do you want? So we don't have to ask because Krishna's not just mommy. Krishna's, he, he is the order supplier, but one should not go to him. One should not means it's not pure devotion to go to him. Don't, st don't let that be the the essence of your relationship. Because sometimes and sometimes not. And when it's sometimes not, then I become disappointed and there's something wrong over there. There's not something wrong over there. If a child asks their parent for something, the parent may not give that something. Not something wrong with the parent. Simply because they didn't give something that their child wanted. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Here up front Let's... again. You have something else online. The follow-up question from follow-up question online. Right. What does it mean for us, Maharaj, to open our heart to see the mercy that is always there? What does it mean? You know, it, it's if, if the, this question is like the question. What does it mean to be sincere? It's not the same, but it's quite similar. And Prabhupada's answer to that is everyone knows what sincere means. You know, it's something that's genuine. It's not just lip service, it's something that's genuine. Open the heart is. I just got a letter from um, a youth 
who had a bad experience, something, something, and they kind of checked out. And so I, I sent a little note to them, you know, some years later, just, you know, let them go on the checked out space they were in and sent them a little note. And they, they said in this letter, I've decided to open my heart to the spiritual dimension of my life again. I didn't ask, you know, what was the prompt that brought that about? But it's just, it, it, we know what it means. You, the heart closes, the heart opens. It's, it's a vessel to receive. And if I want to receive, then open the heart. And if I don't want to receive, then it's, the door is closed. So it's, it, what does it mean? It means you it, it open your heart as you open your heart. What does it mean to be sincere? You, you genuinely want something and you, you, that's the intention heart from the heart level, not the body and mind level, from the heart level. Something that's important to you, then you open your heart to receive. Let's just say what's not. Fruitive. I'm going to, you know, the doership spirit. It's the heart's not open. I'm doing, and I want spirituality. But if my heart's not open to descending mercy, then I'm not opening my heart I'm to spirituality at least. I'm opening my heart to I want. It's another version of the material side of life, darkness side of life. Somebody. There's someone else up front. We'll just take this as the last question. We're going to end. You have something? You have something. Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam, all go to Shri Prabhupada. Big story, please. Yeah, yeah. Guru, go Guru ahead. Maharaj, as you mentioned, like uh, uh, the two inch gap is the significance of the ep mercy and effort. The case, which one comes first, Maharaj? Like, no, some, but there's not that one comes first. Uh, it's like inter. Yeah, there's like, intermingle. Inter inter or some, Which like comes some, first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, it's that kind case, of question. Yeah. But in some devotees, they want to do something, but they won't get effort. They can't make efforts. But in that case, they need a mercy even for the, to get the effort also. I, uh, is it no, Krishna is not limited mm -hmm. to those who make the, the more effort, the more mercy. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. He can give costless mercy just drop a bunch of mercy on someone's head. But if they're not as desiring the mercy, it'll just wash right off. It won't be transformation. So, some effort. And it can be small, medium, large. It's a relationship. Anything. It's all about relationships. It's all about relationships. Say it three times. It's all about relationships. In the case, come on, you need to put some at least some effort. Yeah. You are getting the message. Look, the sun is shining and I'm hiding under a rock. Thank you, Guru. It's, there's nothing lacking from the sun. The sun is shining. I'm hiding under a rock. So I don't get the benefit of that sunshine. So some, however big, small, medium, some. Alignment of the heart, body, and mind with the source. Last question. So Maharaj, uh, if we do our 16 rounds, yeah. and if we have read Shastras for an hour, if we have heard some classes from all the senior boxes. devotees, uh, and then we still want to do more at that point of time, should we increase our rounds or increase our? This year, this the answer to your question is the same as the previous question. When well, the answer to the previous question is whatever works. So sometimes you may be inspired to do this, 
some time passes. Sometimes you may be inspired to do that. So then comes which is right, that which is you're inspired to do. And if there's some instruction or a longer term trajectory that you see evolving in your spiritual life, supposing that trajectory may change, supposing for some time something. I want to increase my chanting and you get absorbed in increasing your chanting. Or some time passes. I haven't sufficiently read and understood the, uh, the Bhakti Shastri, so let me, so it depends. It's not a rule, it's something, it's a relationship. In any relationship sometimes and sometimes. Okay, that's it. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Yeah.